Hello, and welcome back to another Daily Top 10's Top 10 video. Society is built on stories. Whether it's moral tales to make you a good boy or girl, historical sagas that teach us about the past, or political tall tales to cover up what's really going on. And in the modern world, the gatekeeper of the stories are the movie makers. Yeah, in your face books. If we wanted to use our imagination, we would have gone to art school. Movies take years to plan, and sometimes the pre-production alone can drag on for decades as legal battles are fought and scripts are rewritten, and the production itself can be hit by a never-ending amount of problems. So today, we're going to be looking at the top 10 movies that were never released. Lights, camera, no action. Actually, we have a little surprise for you. The Daily Top 10s have a lot of incredible unreleased videos. They're so secret, we haven't even written them or picked a title. But if you hit subscribe, you'll be the first one to know. Number 10. Empire of the Deep Self-made movies are rarely successful, unless it's a classic, um, bedroom adventure. So when a Chinese billionaire tried to make an underwater Avatar ripoff, they should have seen some red flags. And when he rejected 40 scripts as none of them matched his vision, the red flag should have gone into mass production. He ended up sinking $208 million of his own money into this wet disaster, and still managed not to pay many of the actors and crew. Ex-Bond girl Olga Kirilenko was cast in the lead female role, and despite the huge budget, it looks like only $20 was spent on her mermaid outfit. The film spent five years in post-production, but still managed to look like it was made in the mid-90s, so it's still never seen the light of day. Let's just hope it stays on the ocean floor where it belongs. Number 9. Dune, Jodorowsky this is often described as the greatest film never made, and there's a fantastic documentary about it called Jodorowsky's Dune, which we recommend that you watch. Jodorowsky is a cult Chilean-French filmmaker who made his name with two films called El Topo and Holy Mountain. <laughs> They're both highly psychedelic, inspired by the LSD movement of the late 60s. His next project was the classic science fiction novel Dune, the story of a boy fulfilling a prophecy on a desert planet dominated by giant worms. The director built up a team of very talented people. With French comic book artist Mobius, he built a shot-by-shot -shot storyboard of the whole movie. H.R. Giger, who went on to design Alien, helped create designs for sets. Salvador Dali was going to become the highest paid film star ever, getting $100,000 per minute of screen time. Orson Welles agreed to play a part if they hired him his favorite chef, and Pink Floyd was going to make the soundtrack. Yeah, we know, it sounds amazing. Sadly, no studio would pick it up, and it never got made. But the book that was made to sell it to the studios became legendary, and many of its ideas appear in other science fiction movies. Number 8. The Tourist, Claire Nato. Sadly for H.R. Giger, this wasn't the only movie he worked on that didn't see the light of day. The Tourist, written by Claire Nato, did the rounds in Hollywood hitting problems with creative differences and the standard studio financial collapse, which seems to be a pretty regular occurrence. The story was about aliens who had secretly taken up residence in Manhattan. They had their own club called The Corridor, which was a meeting place for plenty of different species from across the galaxy. They'd meet up, get drunk, and have giant alien orgies. The main character, Grace Ripley, looked like your regular corporate exec, but was an alien trying to get off the Earth. Universal still owns the rights, so maybe it will get made. Although, it has already been partially ripped off by the Men in Black series. Number 7. Hippie Hippie Shake Richard Neville was an Australian writer and editor, 
and used to run the satirical magazine Oz. His memoir was turned into a screenplay, particularly the part about how he came to the UK to launch the British version of Oz as part of the counterculture movement. The magazine ended up as part of a major court case for distributing an obscene issue. The movie was to star Killian Murphy and Sienna Miller and had Beban Kidron directing, who had previously led the second Bridget Jones movie. The film was mostly shot, but it never got released. The reasons are not entirely clear. Kidron left during post-production, citing artistic differences. It's thought, though, that some of the real-life people portrayed, such as feminist icon Germaine Greer, were not too pleased with the characters. Number 6. Don's Plum Back in the day before DiCaprio was setting the world to rights and telling us all to ditch plastic and turn down the heating, he was less squeaky clean. It's no surprise that being young, rich, and famous, and handsome, are going to make you do some things you might regret. DiCaprio, along with Tobey Maguire and David Blaine, were part of a group named the Pussy Posse, who would seduce girls and generally get into trouble. They agreed to be in a friend's short film, playing rough versions of themselves. But when they realized that it had been made as a full movie starring them, they blocked its release. Don's Plum was eventually released outside the US and Canada, but is still blocked from distribution within those countries. Number 5. The Man Who Killed Don Quixote Terry Gilliam rose to fame as part of Monty Python. He then went on to establish himself as one of the greatest living directors, with classics such as Twelve Monkeys, Brazil, and The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. But he's also one of the unluckiest directors to ever work, with project after project being hit with major problems. He's had financial issues when studios have gone out of business. He's had 9-11 stop a film he was planning, as the apocalyptic tone would have been too much. And he had to deal with the death of his lead actor, Heath Ledger, who sadly passed away while filming Dr. Parnassus. However, the biggest disaster was The Man Who Killed Don Quixote, based around the famous Cervantes novel. The first shoot area had NATO aircrafts flying over it, and on the second day, there was a flash flood, destroying equipment and changing the whole landscape. To finish the job, the lead actor, Jean Rochefort, suffered a herniated disc and had to quit the whole project. On the upside, there was a critically acclaimed documentary made about the failed project called Lost in La Mancha. Number 4. The Fantastic Four, 1994 Let's be honest. Marvel has taken over the cinema now. Most performers have barely made it out of acting school before they're squeezed into spandex, given a dubious backstory, and told to pick one of their remaining superpowers, like the ability to control milk, or a super fast typing ability. But this was not always the case. In the mid-80s, German producer Bernd Eichinger spoke with Stan Lee and managed to buy the movie rights to the Fantastic Four, but he couldn't get the movie off the ground. So to stop his option on the movie expiring, he hired a B-movie director and strung a film together with a million dollar budget. It was scheduled for release in early 94, but it never got released and many people think that they never intended it to be. It was all to keep the movie rights. Number 3. The Other Side of the Wind Orson Welles was a big man in the movie industry back in the day. Directing the classic Citizen Kane, starring in The Third Man, and voicing in the animated Transformer movie. What a time. We considered sparing the wretched little planet Cybertron. But now, we shall witness it's dismemberment. He was also a big man in later life, but that was related to a love of food. His film, The Other Side of the Wind, was ironically about a director and his unfinished film. Wells recruited many of his fellow directors to act the parts of the various journalists, movie makers, and hanger-ons that socialized with the director. And he mostly financed the film himself, so it was often delayed when he was hit with bills and taxes. 
it never made it to the cinemas. When it was announced in 2014 that the film would be complete to mark the centenary of Wells' birth in 2015, even this was hit with production problems. In March 2017, the work continued. We're not holding our breath. Number 2. Kaleidoscope Another cinema great now, the master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock. In the mid-60s, his career was on the decline, both in the box office and at the hands of the critics. So he decided to throw caution to the wind and make the nastiest film he could think of. The shopping list included rape, murder, necrophilia, acid baths, and serial killers. It would make Psycho look like a rom-com in comparison. He managed to get a script written after a few failed collaborations but he could never get the funding he needed. For some reason, sadistic gay bodybuilder serial killer did not scream box office success. Number 1. God's Behaving Badly Author Marie Phillips was delighted when her book got picked up to be made into a Hollywood movie. She got to travel to New York and be on set as she saw stars like Christopher Walken and Sharon Stone bring her story to life. Okay, not her story exactly. Okay, kind of something like her story. Okay, they butchered it. And apparently, the director was slightly unhinged, and she was told not to even address him, and that none of her input on the film was wanted. The movie never managed to crawl out of the basement into the light, but luckily Marie Phillips kept up with the noble game of writing books. Thanks for watching another Daily Top 10's Top 10 video. And remember, it's our duty to entertain and yours to subscribe. Hey there! Did you like that Top 10 video? I know you did. You just watched it. Now you're here with me. So, uh, go hit that subscribe button so I, uh, don't have to whack you in the noodle. You don't want, uh, you don't want Sammy here whacking you in the noodle. Because you know what happens to your noodle when Sammy hits you? Uh, bad things. It's picture an egg. You remember that? It's gross. You don't want that. You'll get it all over the computer and, uh, you know, you might break the internet. Anyway, subscribe. You know, make sure you like the channel, all that stuff. You, 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 you've been on YouTube before. Just do what you know you need to do to see more videos. And hey, if you're in need of a hitman, go down and uh, leave a comment for me. Maybe we can connect. You can give me some money. I can give uh, some violence to someone that you don't like. All right? I'll see you around.